Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, your boy Murdoch211, aka David, in the kitchen today. I'm gonna make you something to eat. Well, when I say make you something to eat, I'll be eating it, because hello, look at this body. This body is not a let you eat body. I'm gonna eat all the food myself, but I'm gonna cook it, and hopefully, you'll enjoy watching me. Uh, and maybe you'll copy the recipe yourself and say, hey, look, it was a good meal. Let me try it out myself. So, follow me. Excuse me, this is my first video. I'm a little shy. Uh, I don't talk much by myself in the camera. If there were people here with me, then it'll be easier. You also might see my mom's coming through the kitchen as well, cause you know, she's nosy. No, she's not, she's not nosy. She likes to see what I cook. She also loves to eat what I cook. But, enough talking. Let's get to start preparing. I can show you how I prep the meal, and of course, cook it as well. All right, All talk right, to you in a minute. Back. So I'll be using the Hamilton Beach steamer. Uh, it's a two-layered steamer. I just added the water, uh, put it kind of on a surface that, you know, it would uh, won't tip over. Try to be as even as possible. I'll connect it when I start cooking. But again, it's the Hamilton Beach. Uh, I had this for about two years. It doesn't do me wrong. Usually things take about 20 minutes, 30 minutes in there. And I'll steam it, but like I said, I'll be steaming the pork chop for maybe only 10 minutes, but my veggies uh, my potatoes, I'll be steaming for full cooking for 20 minutes. Just wanted to show you what it looks like. That's in case you're interested in getting it yourself. I get it to steamer. All right, right now, right, I'm just kind of washing my red potatoes. I'll be doing five. I don't need five. It's only two of us gonna be eating today, but I'll do five. That's in case I want extra or if I want to eat some tomorrow. These are red potatoes. I'll uh, kind of wash them and then scrub them to get all the dirt out. Uh, see you in a little bit. Right. So I cut one of the potatoes. Just wanted to give you an idea of how thick I cut my potatoes. Uh, it's about that. Maybe I'll say a half an inch, about half an inch. I'll cut them so they can all be cut, you know, cook evenly. Um, I'm going to finish up the rest of the potatoes. And then I'll season them up and I'll show you what I'll be seasoning them up with. I'll be back in about all two right, seconds. So I cut up my potatoes. Uh, some of them are thicker than others. Um, I kind of went OD with the knife. But the good thing is, I know that the steamer's gonna cook them anyway. They're all shaped in different sizes. But like I said, I know that the steamer's gonna cook them well. Uh, push case, you know, worst case scenario, when I check to see if they're tender enough, I'll add a few minutes of time if I have to. If I have to. Uh, one thing I would like to tell you guys is, when it comes to steaming your vegetables in the steamer, you wanna keep your vegetables, your your um your starches wet you know you want to keep them consistently wet because when you go into the steamer it'll help on the pre-cook so i'm gonna season them up real quick let me just show you what i'm using so to this season. is my, what i'll be seasoning the potatoes with um i try to keep seasoning very simple uh with five seasonings i try not to do more than that but today i'm actually adding some black pepper uh so i got some Black peppercorn, I got some garlic salt, classic Old Bay seasoning, some onion powder, some salt, and some crushed red peppers. Uh, when it comes to seasoning potatoes, because the steamer is so powerful, it's gonna compress all your seasoning even more inside of the potato, so it'll be, it'll be extra seasoned. So what I recommend when it comes to serving size, I would recommend, um, uh, maybe a tablespoon of the Old Bay seasoning because I gave you five potatoes and that amount. I'll give you a half a tea, uh, tablespoon of the garlic salt. Um, the peppercorn is up to your flavor. Uh, that depends on how, how much uh, black pepper you like. Onion powder, I would say a quarter tablespoon for the onion powder. Salt based on taste. But remember when you put things in the steamer, um, it, it, extra season every it's like extra seasoning in the steamer so be careful with the salt and then i like a little heat with um st you know steamed items so some crushed red pepper there you go so i'm using uh six seasonings today so that's what i'm using let me uh, get back to you once well, i see first the of potatoes. all i like to say i hope that you're watching this video before you prepare your meal i hope you're not following my instructions word by word because I made an error earlier and I said tablespoons instead of teaspoons. My apologies, 
Um, <laughs> your stuff is gonna be over seasoned. If you use a tablespoon, I, I said, let me correct myself. But I didn't wanna repeat myself because I'm not a good editor and I don't wanna go rushing into the edit. I'm not, a, I, I, this is my first video again. So my potatoes are seasoned. If you find yourself that you over seasoned your stuff, I still recommend leaving your potatoes in the strainer. That's how I seasoned it. I added everything in the strainer that if you did over season it, you can really just add some water, rinse out some of the seasoning if you over season it. Also with the salt, remember that Obey seasoning has salt in it. I, when I say salt to taste, I really mean by taste. If you prefer to salt afterwards, if it's, I'd rather have things under salted and add it later than you know steaming it with the salt. So remember again that Obey seasoning has salt added to it and salt is to, for taste. Pepper is also to taste. I added, like I see, as you can see, red chili peppers. So I like a little heat with my potatoes, but if you can't handle it, I would substitute, I will, I would eliminate the black pepper. For my okay? seasonings for my pork chops, I'm doing two pork chops and the pork chops are pretty thick. They're maybe about three quarters to an inch thick. You saw some of these seasonings earlier when I was doing the potatoes, but right now I'll be seasoning the pork chops. Uh, I'll be using black pepper, still onion powder, still garlic salt, red chili peppers, but I'm using the adobo, the light version of adobo. Now, when it comes to your preparation for your pork chops, remember that meat is thicker, so you have to put enough seasoning. So my recommendations would keep the black pepper. So I would use about a fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper, a quarter of a teaspoon of onion powder. I love garlic salt, I love garlic. Remember this is garlic salt, but it doesn't have any salt in it, it's just garlic powder. I would use about a full teaspoon, um, a quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Now, because this is not regular salt, it's adobo, and it's adobo light. Again, it's by taste. Remember some of the content in adobo is repeated with onion powder and garlic. So I would only season the meat with a, a, a quarter of a teaspoon of adobo powder now if you find again at the end of your meal when you're ready to when you, you finish preparing it and you're ready to eat it if you need some salt i'd rather add salt because the steamer again will compress that seasoning into a small area and you'll find yourself that it, it's probably just enough seasoning i'll be back so okay guys um these are my pork chops like i said earlier look how thick these pork chops are you see all that fat on the pork chop I trimmed them down a little bit. I didn't want too much. I just left a certain amount of fat. Remember to season that part of the pork chop. Remember to season the fat on any kind of meat because, you know, that's what distributes and falls apart and kind of like acts as the butter or the fattening effect in your meat. So you want that the rest of the, uh, the fat to continue to season your meat in the steamer, in the grill, in the oven, or in a frying pan, or in the stir fry. So always season the fat of any content of meat that you're using. So these are the pork chops. I, I use exactly the recipe I gave you, the uh, measurements of, of the seasoning I gave you in these two pork chops. Uh, maybe it's a little too much for you, but try it out, first time recipe. These pork chops were actually, just, these two were only, they were under $5, maybe $5 the most. So your second time, it'll always be better. You'll know that you want less seasoning. You'll know that uh, the seasoning that I probably suggested was probably too much on your second time around. But for me, I like the, uh, the, the, the recipe I'm giving you. I've eaten it before. I think it's delicious. So this is the pork, these are the pork chops. So the Hamilton Beach steamer is now on. It's plugged up, it's on. So let me add the time that I need to put, so it says 20 minutes. I'm gonna put it at about 35 minutes because I want the pre-cook to start on a steam first. Uh, let me show you how I'm gonna set up my steamer. Let me move this over a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I set up my steamer on, on the double layer of how to put the protein and how to put your sides. I don't have too much okay. space in my kitchen, but let me see if I can do this with one hand. So these are the two layers right here. These are how the two layers come with the uh, Hamilton Beach steamer. Let me widen out. 
first layer, you'll see that these little pegs on the side of the, of the bottom layer. And then this is the tray for the steamer. So you'll see that there's these little eggs that you have to put down and then connect the pegs to those little holes. And that's the first layer. Like, sorry, I hope my fingers don't get in the way. Excuse my feet. Again, I'm saying I don't have a, I really don't have a tripod or anything. And there we go. First layer, boom. That's it. This is the piece that goes as the first bottom piece of the steamer. I believe this is the catcher. This catches the water. You fill the water here to a max line, and then you put this piece right here, and you'll stack like Legos your first and second layer. This is where the water, after you steam, it'll catch it. It'll catch the fat, it'll catch the steam, it'll do all that, okay? All right. So first layer, down, here we go. Yes, I washed everything. And for this guy out there, one of my boys at work, he knows who he is. Uh, he hates when <laughs> I eat my own food and I don't wash my hands. But you know what, it's a bad habit. You know, where I do work, there's a lot of spread of germs. He's absolutely right. But every time I came to this kitchen over here, I obviously had to wash the seasoning off my hands. And yes, I use Dawn to wash my hands. <laughs> so you know who you are. And yes, I've washed my hands so many times. And the last half an hour, it's not, it's not even fun. There we go. So I've layered my pork chops on the bottom. I put bone in towards each other, towards the middle, to steam more. I'm trying to tuck my fat in to keep them away from the sides. <laughs> well, not my fat, because I got my own fat. But I mean the fat of the pork chops. That's the first layer. All right. First layer looks like that. Look how pretty that looks. All right. Let me show you the top layer. I kind of made an error in calculation. Um, the way these are set up, I was supposed, this was supposed to be layer one, and I didn't see, <laughs> you know, I can't read that well, uh, but let me fix that up for you, and now I'm going to have to rewash this, the layer I put the pork chops in, because you know how pork is, so, and I don't want to put anything pork with my, my, my side potatoes, so let me do this right again, next time I'll read, so if you're using this steamer, do me a favor, don't be like me, read where it says one. And then this one says two. Y'all got me yeah, nervous. Guys, after following the right instructions, I put layer one on the bottom and layer two is on top. I did it guys, you know, I'm such a genius, you know. One means first, two means second, Der. All right, let me get right back over here. All right, so the potatoes are still here. Do not be afraid to sprinkle a little bit of water. When I say sprinkle, don't rinse them off, but sprinkle a little water on your potatoes before you put them in a the steamer. Because remember I told you that, put this in here. Remember keeping your potatoes hydrated, wet, in a steamer is always a good idea. You kind of just want to move them around evenly on the top layer. So it'll be an even cook. There we go. That's how pretty it's going to look. Now, finally, this is the lid. This is the lid that goes on top. It'll close everything together. If you see on the tray, there's little holes where you'll see the steam traveling. Look, it's already building up in the bottom layer where my pork chops are at. It's at 27 minutes, which is good. I just got to pay attention that when it's at 17, I take the pork chops out so I can grill them. See you in a bit. Okay, before I start doing the grilling of my pork chops, I like to do a little stir fry. Um, the stir fry is gonna consist of some mushrooms right over here. They already chopped, little baby portobello mushrooms. My favorite, peppers and onions, frozen. You can't go wrong with these guys. 
you putting them in the freezer, peppers and onions in the freezer will last a lifetime. Well, not really a lifetime, but trust me, if you buy them fresh inside of a, a supermarket or of a store in a bodega or any kind of mini mart, you're getting them fresh, you'll mean, that'll mean that you'll have to use, utilize it. Use your vegetables way quicker than you need to. Get these bird's eyes, keep them in the freezer, you, you know, thaw them out, or when you put them in a frying pan, they'll cook down. These are great. Then another thing, I love garlic. Love garlic to death. This is a garlic paste. I'm not gonna use so much of this uh, because again, it's only a stir fry, but I love garlic and I love garlic paste. My favorite Italian seasoning. It has rosemary, it has thyme, it has uh, oregano. It has some good stuff in it to add to your stir fry to place on top of your pork chops. And again, uh, a little bit of salt on taste. Salt on taste, guys. If you're not a salt person, do not use salt. Your pork chops and your potatoes have salt. Don't worry about using salt if you do not need to put salt on your stir fry. I'm only gonna put like a dash, really quick dash. I'll use about, and I, I gotta get this right, not a tablespoon, a full teaspoon of the garlic paste. I want to say three quarters to maybe the whole, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna use this whole pack uh, to place on top of my stir fry for my pork chops because I love veggies. And this bag is a 400 gram bag. I say I'll use about a third of veggies, maybe to half of the bag of peppers and onions. I'll be back. Let me do, I'm gonna do my stir fry. The stir fry, I just wanted to show you my baby. This is gonna be the grill I'll be using on the stove pot, the stove top, the stove pot, do you hear me? On the stove top, I told you guys get me nervous, to grill both sides of the pork chops. I'm gonna say that the pork chops will be a quarter, a quarter done to maybe half done in the steamer. And then I'll finish off the pork chops for about, I would say eight minutes to eight to 10 minutes on each side on this grill. Just wanted to show you how it looked. It's very pretty, look at the bottom. All right. Just stir fry Maybe pot. Love this pot. It's pretty big, it's thick. You can do, uh, you can stir fry, you can, it's so thick you can boil. You can do anything, any kind of protein you want in here. But right now I'm only using this pot right now. This is the label of the pot. Uh, I'm showing you where I have my heat. I have my heat out of a 10 dial knob. It is at between, it's at four right now. Got it right nice and low. I'm going to right now add some olive oil um, and then start stir frying my stuff. olive oil. My mother got me addicted to this when I was younger. Um, when, she, when I was younger, she was very ill. Um, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil was put in her menu very early after her getting sick. Uh, she is now free of that sickness for over 25 years. Uh, she's strong. So guess what? I'm going to use the same thing that she tells me, extra virgin olive oil. And then I also use a lot of garlic, which is also helpful for what she was fighting for all those years. So there we go. So this is by I. I pretty mo much know how much I need. So I would say olive oil, that's about maybe, a, that's a tablespoon to a tablespoon of a half and a half of olive oil. Get that moving around all over your pot. There you go, so it can evenly cook and heat that pot really nice. Peppers, I love onions and peppers. There you go, that's about half the bag of onions and peppers. Nah, put a little bit more. About half the bag of onions and peppers has been put in a pot. That'll start to heat up. Remember, because these are frozen, there's gonna be a lot of moisture in these onions and peppers. So you're gonna have to cook that moisture out. To uh, a six. Sorry, wrong side. Up to a six, look at the heat. To get this, these onions and peppers going. So I can add my mushrooms and add my garlic, my salt, and my Italian seasoning. The killer, what we all hate, salt. 
So these little knobs up here, this you see how much, it'll tell you how much salt can come out. That's what I'm doing, one hole. And that's it for taste. So I just added a little bit for taste. Italian seasoning smells so good. I love it, let me smell it again. It smells so delicious. I'm gonna add about a quarter teaspoon, uh, sorry, quarter teaspoon. Maybe a half a teaspoon, add that in there. Get that light and go in, look how good that looks. Doesn't that look good? Mmm. Making me hungry already. Yeah, so out of that. 10, I bring the knob back down to a four, uh, let's say a three. Put it back down to a three, see the fire? I bring it down because I want this to cook down the moisture of the water before I add my uh, mushrooms. Um, how the potatoes and the pork chops are going. As you can see, they don't look very pretty right now. They look kind of gray because when you steam things, it's a different cook from when you stir fry or you're frying or you're grilling something. But they look amazing. I love how they look right now. That seasoning, look at that water just dripping. The potatoes, well seasoned. I'm waiting for those to cook up. I can't wait to eat I this, know this guys. Is repetitive, but we're back. Even though I put a little garlic paste, I'm gonna put a few dashes of garlic powder. Like I said, I love garlic. So I put a few dashes of garlic powder inside of my stir fry of onions and peppers. You don't have to do it because you already have enough garlic, but I love garlic. I have no problems with the taste of garlic. Here you go, here are my little mushrooms. I just finished rinsing them out. You always want to rinse your mushrooms out. You want to get uh, the extra dirt that come with mushrooms. I know that we might think that because it's packaged that um, they're fully clean, but there's dirt and, and they, the dirt kind of sticks to inside of the mushrooms. Um, I wanted to show you actually this too. Some people ask me about this part of the mushroom, the black part of the mushroom, the bottom. You do not remove that, that stays on. That is to stay on. Let me show you another one. You keep that part of the mushroom on. You don't have to take that off. That is not dirt. That is actually a, a part of the mushroom, okay? So I'm gonna throw these mushrooms right in there. Look how pretty that looks, guys. I'll try to get every mushroom in there. That costs money. There you go. Look how nice that looks. Wait till I start stir frying that. Mm. Look at that. Wait till that starts getting color and starts dissolving. It smells incredible in here, guys. You, I wish you were here. All right, you, so I kind of just want to move my stuff around. I like to lay it down flat on all parts of the pan, so everything get evenly cooked. That's gonna take about anywhere from five to eight minutes to cook down, to get tender. And then, oh man, it smells so good. Let me make sure all this seasoning is on everything. Look at that. You know what, maybe I might even do a sauce with this. Let me see, Let me, I got some sour cream in the refrigerator. Let me see if I can make this into a little sauce. What do you think, guys? You wanna make me, want me to uh, make this into a little sauce? Some sour cream. A little bit of milk, render it down a little bit. Hmm, let's see, maybe I'll do that. If not, I think this looks delicious by itself. I decided to make a little sauce with it. Um, I want to put a little texture, uh, a little bit of whole kernel uh, golden corn. This is not too sweet, but I'm gonna add sour cream into this mix. Not too much, but you know, I wanted some texture. Uh, I love corn, so, and I put, left a little bit of water of the corn inside of it. So I'm putting about half of the can of corn in here. There you go, about half of the can is gone. There you go. And then I'll add some sour cream. Uh, that moisture from the water of the corn is gonna help out. Keep it as a sauce uh, so I can place on top of the pork chop. I'm telling you guys, this is gonna be banging. So part. That, yep, David is fat. Murdoch 11 is a fat ass. Uh, he can't stay away from the fatty food. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon, yes, this is a tablespoon, and a tablespoon and a half of butter uh, to keep more, to, to leave a little bit more liquid into this my little sauce before I add my sour cream. So, let's go, it's more than just one, and let's do another half. So, this is not real butter, I would prefer you use 100% butter, but this is what I have in my fridge. And since it was the last idea to make this sauce, 
we're gonna use the country crop. Finally for my stir fry that has now become a sauce, some sour cream. I'm only gonna use about two tablespoons of sour cream. Only reason why is because I don't have more. <laughs> and I don't really need that because I have butter. I have other things that's in there that makes it fatty. Let me raise my dial up a little bit to so maybe a five. And I'm gonna use two tablespoons of sour cream. If we don't like sour cream, you would honestly be good with the butter. But I like the, the sour cream kind of taste, that little tang. And this is kind of just water with a little, sour cream is just water with water. With a little bit of cream, but that little tang from sour cream is amazing. So that's why I'm using it. Let me open this up with my teeth. Now, this is not sanitary. You know what? I think I only have about two tablespoons left of sour cream. So guess what? It's going right in. It's not coming out. Let me. I'm in this spoon. And right now, I'm gonna have to uh, cut you off. Sour cream. Leaving the sour cream and the butter sitting in one place. Is that moisture from the corn is cooking up everything else. My uh, mushrooms looking good. I, like I said, I left this up high a little bit. It's at medium heat. Kind of just letting it sit in it there, and I'll mix that all together in a minute. But just wanted to show you that I put about uh, about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of uh, olive oil in this pan because guess what? Let me show you also. I'm gonna put this at half heat. So I'm gonna put this at about a five to a six. So you can see the fire. But going back to what I said when it was done, look at these pork chops. They're not cooked, guys. They were just steamed. Well, they look cooked as well, but you know what? I'm gonna put those on the grill right now. Still on, I just wanted to kind of show you. Doesn't look good, but you know what? I'm happy because look at that. That's a lot of fat that I cut from those pork chops. A lot of fat came down. So if you're really into clean, healthy cooking, even though I'm about to fatten these pork chops up and you don't want to add any sauces and say, you know what, I just want some flavored pork, steaming them and then, you know what, putting them on the grill for a little bit, some color, will make it amazing. Look how much fat came out of that. I'm going to put the first tray, the, the potato tray back on the first layer so I can continue to cook the potatoes and keep them warm. But that's what it's going I had to keep the first layer there still because obviously one and two means how you fit the steamer. I really hope you guys are really watching the video before you start cooking because the errors that you guys would have made because of me, oh, I'm so sorry. But potatoes are still there. Potatoes still have, they're just being warmed right now. They're warm. Let me, matter of fact, let me check how tender these potatoes are. Go get me a little fork. And yep, these potatoes are tender. So keeping them warm, it's gonna be great. So my chops chop are on. on my little stove top grill. All I wanna do is put a little color on this guy. So you wanna keep the bone in the middle of the pan because obviously where the bone is is the thickest part. You know what? Honestly, the thickest part is still the outside, but I like to keep them boned in. So let me show you. Let me show you my sauce over here. Still going. This house smells so good right now. I can't wait to show you what my plate looks like. I uh, wish you guys were here. But, but you're not here. But you know what? You're actually here because you're seeing me anyway. All right? So give me a little bit. I showed you. I'll show you what my sauce looked like. Look how pretty it is. It's still a little loose. So I'm leaving on the heat so it can be a little heavier. But look at how beautiful that, that sauce is. Those, that sauce is going to go on top of the pork chop after I cut them down with, and I have a side of potatoes. I hope I can plate this right and plate this nicely for you guys. Let me throw this away. And I wanna show you the pork chops as well. Uh, let me do a little quick flip to show you what the pork chops look like. Okay. I wanna get a little okay. brown. Let's see what they look like. Let's see how they're browning up. So let me put them on the other side right now. Get them brown. Let me just flip them. These, they, they already cooked. I'm telling you, the steam I already cooked these down. I'm just glad that I was able to take a lot of that fat off in the steamer. But as soon as that color is nice and brown on both sides, I'm gonna cut them down. I'm gonna rest a little bit actually first, then cut them down and put them on a plate, show you the potatoes, show you my sauce, and we're gonna be hopefully ready. What happened off camera? Um, I added a little bit more garlic powder, I tasted it. I added a little bit more garlic powder and I added a few dashes of black pepper into the sauce. 
So I'm sorry I didn't put it on camera, but just wanted to let you know what I did outside of the camera. So I, it's even though it's a little thin, I want to keep it this way. I don't want to get it too thick. I want that to kind of just fall over the pork chops. This is pretty much done. My sauce is done, guys. It looks amazing. Right, if you're wondering why the color changed a little bit, off camera, I added a dash of paprika, guys. You know, that's that um, dry red pepper. Like, it's like ground dry red pepper. I like that, that color. So I added a little bit of ground paprika. Just a dash, just a little dash. I don't even want to say the measurement because I literally just put a dash of it, okay? And I put the heat back on a little bit because I think that every time you put any kind of seasoning, you got to cook it down for at least a minute, you know? Back to these sexy beasts again. Look at that beautiful color. Like I said, about eight minutes on the side. I, I love that color. Maybe I'll add a little bit of color on this side, but look at that pork chop, guys. Steam. There's no, there's really no fat in the pan because the steamer kind of took it all out. Some people might say, hey, this is too dry. But guess why it won't be dry today? Booyah. That sauce looks amazing. If you're not a mushroom fan, I really don't know what to substitute this with. I would say maybe you want to do it with cabbage to get a good texture, you know, kind of not overcook the cabbage, kind of give it a crunch cabbage, or maybe some green spinach. Like you could just toss the green spinach after you turn off the heat, so kind of wilt down, but it's still got some texture. But I love mushrooms, it looks amazing to me. Tell me what you guys think. Would you eat this? Would you eat this when I slice this down and I put this on top? Would you eat it? Let the pork chops just rest on the heat after I turn them off. Um, I'm gonna slice this down. Nice little maybe half to one inch cuts. Slice them right down. I just follow this line here up to the bone. But do they look pretty? Let me know. How perfectly cooked these pork chops are. Dark meat, dark meat to the white meat of the pork chop. Look at how beautiful that looks. Let me show you what I'm about to do. Let me figure out how I'm gonna do this, right? So let me go over here. This is what I cut off. To the bone, look how the bone, fully cooked to the bone. Steaming your pork chops is an amazing idea, guys. You guys gotta try it. Let me just set this over here to the side. Over here in my living room. Look at all the beautiful plants. Look at all the oxygen we're using right now. These plants are gorgeous. Full escape of the room. All right, let's get back in the kitchen. All right, I just wanna show you what I'm about to do right now. How I'm gonna mess your heads up right now. Oh, you guys, y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. Oh, I just wanna show you more plants. Look how beautiful these plants look. You guys are not ready. Look at this, oh. give me one second. Murdoch, what are you about to do? What are you gonna do, Murdoch? Dave, don't do this. Hold up. No, no, don't do this. Look at this. Look, 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 look. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that looks. Can I, let me zoom in for you guys. Oh my goodness, look at how beautiful this looks. That sauce is gonna be off the hook. Let me show you what my plate looks like. Let me finish it up. What have you done? Oh my God, what have you done? How could you kill us with this amazing meal? Look at the potatoes, fully cooked. Just wanted to show you the plate. So guys, listen. You guys are gonna love this meal. I think you're gonna think it's very delicious. It might not be healthy because I added some fat stuff. If you really wanted to be healthy, do me a favor. Take away the fattening things that I took out, like the butter and the sour cream. But I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know if it's gonna look like that. I hope your meal looks like that. Look at how beautiful that is. I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to put it on Instagram. Um, I don't even know what to say about this. You know, I'm going to smash this. I'm going to destroy this meal. Look at this. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for following me today. This video might be too long. Maybe I made some errors. Maybe I made some mistakes. But there's been some friends in my life that have been telling me, yo, put your face on camera. you got a great personality. You can cook. Show us how to make these meals. I'm going to try. I'm going to make this kitchen 
worth something. If it, even if it doesn't mean that I, that people end up following me or people end up making my meals, I'm gonna make it worth something because my hobby is cooking. I need food in my life. Not really because of how fat I am, but I love food. Um, it's, it's one of the best things that I picked up growing up is how to cook. And maybe this meal uh, will be as delicious as it is for me uh, with your family. Hopefully your family will enjoy it. But thank you for watching. I appreciate I uh, hope you follow. I hope you uh, like. I hope you subscribe. I hope you look for me in the future. And yes, the setup will get better. I'll get a tripod. I'll try to see if I get some better lighting. But I had to just do it. I had to try, guys. Thank you for watching and take care. Have a good one. Bye.